Well, good morning, Wednesday. Uh, it's the 24th of April. And so, um, as I've been promising every day, going to the Proverbs to the 24th. And, you know, there's so many. Like 24, it goes from 1 to 34 verses. And each verse is so different. It would just drive me crazy. <laughs> and so, but each one is good. But I just have to maybe pick one. So, I opened my Bible and uh, I got the NIV, and I love this version of it. But um, so my eyes fell on uh, Proverbs 24, 13. <laughs> and so this may mean nothing to you, but I got up this morning, and I just felt like bees. You know, I've, I've got honeybees. The Lord has just shown me that my life through is a life. I should look to the honeybee uh, for wisdom. And so... Um, and you guys know why, because I, you know, he, I wrote a book about a honeybees, and I just had, you know, the honeybee has been a part of my life ever since my birth. And so most of you that are listening know that. So I opened up Proverbs 24, and it says, I just fell on 13, my son, eat honey because it is good, and the honeycomb which is sweet to your taste. So shall the knowledge of wisdom be to your soul. If you have found it, there is pros a prospect, and your hope will not be cut off. <laughs> so, um, that's just, for, you know, I've told you that when I come up here, and um, and it's, I, I believe this is for many pastors and teachers and stuff, that what we're saying was for us first. And then, it, but it comes through us. And so, the, the videos that I do, the messages, whatever the Lord gives me. As for me first, a lot of times, a lot of times, I'll be listening to my videos. The Lord's just, you know, have me open up one and it'll just be exactly what I needed to hear that day. But it might have been something I said two years ago, you know. And so today we're about the honeybee, you know. And so the honeybee, you know, they work until they, they just, they just work until they die, you know. And they only live a very short time, but they do so many things in their lifetime. And, um. But it's a great sisterhood, too, which I love. There's so many things about the honeybee that I love. And I love studying about it. But I just know that the Lord has that in my mind. But today, I'm also looking at um, Isaiah 41, which everybody knows. And most people, you know, um, I said, Lord, what shall I say today? You know, and I just heard Isaiah 41, 10 which we all love. It says, Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. Yes, I will help you. I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And so, um, you know, God does things uh, in the spirit, but he also shows me things spiritual, physical, because we're physical. We're in the earth, you know, and we're alive here. And, and so um, for a very long time, I had a tumor with cancer and it was so painful. There was a week I couldn't even get out of bed. And the Lord kept showing me this scripture. I'm going to uphold you with my righteous right hand. And so that I've had treatment and the cancer is gone and I'm using my right hand. But all throughout that time of pain and suffering and everything, I was able to work. And I'm a type, you know, I'm a paralegal, but I type a lot. And doing. And I was able to use my right hand. It was always, it never was to the point where I couldn't use it. And I knew that even through the pain and the suffering, it's still God was working with my body, you know, helping me to, he was behind me. He was holding me up with his ha right hand. And so, um, anyway, just, I just thought that was pretty cool because he kept giving me the scripture. He kept leading me to the scripture. And actually, um, it's a refrigerator magnet <laughs> in my kitchen. <laughs> so, um, but one of the things I don't know what I was talking about today is um, routine is really good. My parents were so, I mean, you knew where they were at Monday through Friday, you know, sun up to sundown. You knew where they were. They had such a routine. I don't care if it was Wednesday, they were at a certain place on Wednesday. And even to the point when they went into a restaurant, which they would go every single day, order the same food, the waitresses and the cooks already knew what they wanted, and that it was on the table when they walked in. <laughs> I mean, they were so routine. Routine is really great, and um, but sometimes I like change, you know. And so I have sort of a love-hate relationship with routine. And right now, um, I have these routines when I get up in the morning and at night. I do have, we all kind of ba have basic routines, you know. 
And um, the funny part about it is, is as much as I don't like routine, it seems to be sort of necessary in my life. I find out um, they can, you can cause, you can get into a rut because the last few days, things have been happening that's not allowing me to stay in my routine. And so like I'm up later and I'm up earlier and things are going, I want to, you know, I want to do this at this time of day, but there's something, there are things that are happening that is not allowing me to do. My life has been sort of a, not in a, not in a bad way, but it's telling, it's like the Lord is telling me, you know, you're going to get lazy in that little routine. You can just, so you just kind of, your brain just sort of just shuts down because you're in this routine and you're not really thinking of different things. You're not listening to my voice. And every day is a new day with the Lord. Every day he gives you a new routine. And if we stick to our, if we get kind of stuck in our old routines, then we're not going into different places with the Lord. And we're not seeing how he's changing our lives in different ways. And so um, I'm looking at my, uh, this journal that um, Leonore gave me a while that I love. And I've shown it before. And one of my favorite poems and writers and speakers was Ralph Waldo Emerson. And today he's, uh, it's on the page I opened to. It says, do not go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. Don't go where the path may lead. Go instead where there is no path and leave a trail. So if you stay, don't go where the path may lead. The path might be the, the same path that you've been on for a good while, you know. But sometimes we need to, you know. And we can't make up stuff. It's always got to be the leading of the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit's always wanting to reawake your senses, your senses, reawake, you know, your thoughts and your spiritual being and your soul to say, hey, you know, today's a new day. We're going to do this today, you know. And I can fight it. I'm like, no, I want to, you know, sleep until six like I always do, you know, <laughs> stuff. But no, you're going to get up at 4.30 this morning. I got something special for you to do today, you know. And so we got to be careful that it's not our, you know, we're living for the Lord, you know, every day is living for the Lord. And because that makes it exciting, you know, that you, first of all, it's sort of a peace to know that you're not in control. <laughs> and also to know that, you know, when you wake up in the morning, it's like, this is a new day. Let's see what the Lord has for us today. <laughs> and I love it. And um, I love you guys. I don't want to just ramble on it. You know, Jesus loves you so much more. So I'll see you later. Bye.